Hello, I built another quadcopter using a wooden frame again to experiment with a few ideas I had for trying to reduce jello and make a nice stable platform for doing aerial photography from. Um, it's a bit of an oddball design, I think. I haven't seen anything like this around, which is another one reason that I wanted to try it. And um, turns out to be not such a great result so far. I haven't written it off completely. Uh, oh, actually, the the frame itself was okay. That that wasn't too bad, actually. So I made this gimbal as well. That's that's. Um, I think this is where most of the problems are coming from, uh, because the frame itself is actually fairly jello free. Uh, but I'll get to that in a minute. <coughs> um, so the ideas that I had were to put as much of the weight around the outside, so as far away from the center of gravity as possible. And the idea of that was to increase the rotational inertia of the frame as a whole, so that um, it would be more uh, sluggish to turn, and therefore smoother, so less jittery to fly. And it would also be less susceptible to wind buffeting, at least that was the plan. And as far as that goes, it didn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference. Uh, another idea, or another point of this idea, was to have, instead of having just one point of support for the motor, so usually motors would be out on the end of a, a single-sided boom, so this would be the end of the X frame or the H frame. But uh, I th thought that you might uh, have less vibration starting up from the motor if both ends of the boom were supported at each end like this. Uh, that I think turned out to be fairly true, uh, although it's hard to say, um, it's hard, kind of hard to measure this stuff. Um, another point was that at the front here we have a nice point that's out in front of the propellers to mount the camera on, so that's not going to be getting the propellers in the, in the camera frame. And it also gives us a point that is well away from the electronics. So the way I've arranged the electronics here is that the ESCs are out on the two corners on the left and right. So this is the front. So this is the right corner here. And the left and right each has two ESCs. And the battery is going to be connected at the back. So weight-wise, the camera and the gimbal are going to be out the front. So a lot, of, a lot of weight's going to be out the front, and the battery is going to be somewhere along here, and it can slide along this rail to uh, balance out wherever it needs to be. And all of the high-current DC uh, electronic, um, what do you call it, electrical <laughs> current is flowing along this back arm and this back arm as far away from here, which is where I'm going to put the compass when I eventually put it on. So what I'm trying to do here, of course, is to reduce the effect that all these uh, high current wiring is going to have on the compass when it finally gets on there. So the closest thing to the compass is going to be this motor here. But from this point on, <clears throat> it's not DC current. Sorry. It's not DC current, so it's AC current in here, switching backwards and forwards. I think that should have less effect on the magnetometer, from, from what I read. And each of the wires along the side here, I've twisted those around a little bit to try and reduce the uh, magnetic field that they create as well. Um, so that's some of the, <laughs> the reasoning behind this frame. And the drawbacks are, of course, oh, one more point that I wanted to um, experiment with is keeping all of the props as close together as possible. So there's only a small space between them here. And I noticed with my other quadcopter that I built, the smaller one where I did this, um, it seemed to reduce the amount of buffeting that you get when you're close to the ground. So the, the ground effect, uh, the prop wash that each prop causes to its neighbor seems to be reduced a lot when these props are very close to each other like that. 
Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to try again and see if it was actually a repeatable thing or whether it was just something to do with that other frame. But it seems to be repeatable. This, um, I think maybe the way it works is that rather than this prop um, interfering with this prop, they sort of act as, as one prop all together, if you know what I mean. So when they spin, they're always spinning in the same direction as they approach each other. They're not sort of hitting against each other like that. So the air that's coming down doesn't really get a chance to go down and then come back up to this one. They're all just pushing it down as one united front. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And that part was successful. But anyway, the drawbacks are, of course, that you need a lot more material to make a larger frame. So this is actually only a 40 centimeter wheelbase. But these edges of the frames here corners, the far corners are actually going out a lot further. Um, so it uses a lot more wood than you would need if you were making an H frame or an X frame. And a lot more, <laughs> these bolts actually add up to be quite a bit of weight as well. So the weight definitely I've found to be a little bit annoying already. It's cut, uh, cut the flight time down from 12 minutes that I was getting with my X525 with the aluminium arms. Um, with the same battery I can get nine minutes flight time with this. So it's definitely a significant drop in flight time. Um, what was the other drawback? Uh, I forget what the other drawback was. But anyway, um, so I designed this originally using my Box 2D editor just to size up the, get the distances right and everything and um, see where the propellers were going to spin. This this one here is a 9 inch propeller size, this is a 10 inch propeller size. Uh, I don't actually have any 9 inch propellers yet but I'm going to try them when they arrive. And another reason that I used this Box 2D editing program was because I can put joints in here and manipulate it like this. So originally what I wanted to do was make it so that if you took the two central uh, cross beam pieces out you could fold it up like this. Although I quickly abandoned that idea when I realized how many of these little screws that I was going to have to take out. Pretty much, um, I think about 16 screws would have to be removed. And I would also have to take off these side plates completely uh, on two sides to pull out the central cross beams. So I gave up on that idea and we're just going to have a non-folding frame. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to do for this video was show you um, a few photos of uh, various stages of the build and then show you some pristine jello free footage from the Mobius that I took of with this. But unfortunately only the first part <laughs> worked out and the video footage that I got was unfortunately quite jello ridden. So um, I haven't written it off just yet. I'll try a few more things and see if the results can be improved. Because like I say, most of the problem was actually in this gimbal. Um, the frame itself, when I stuck the Mobius directly onto the frame to start with, that was actually quite good. But it wasn't repeatable. Um, sometimes it was good and sometimes it was not. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it was good sometimes. And I think it may be to do with the Mickey Mouse way that I attached the battery. I just sort of strapped it onto this bar here. It wasn't very secure. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at some of the photos of the uh, build. Uh, where did they go? Yeah, this, this build was very, very easy. Um, it only needed three separate types of wood. So this... this um, wood here, I had eight plates of this. So this is actually a plywood, although you may be forgiven for not thinking that it was plywood when you first look at it because the outer layer of the plywood is made from a very nice wood called shina, which I'm not sure of the English at the moment, but it's um, almost completely grain free as you can see here. It's um, really quite nice wood. So anyway, I spent a few more dollars to get that plywood rather than the boring grotty looking one. Anyway, so you just need eight pieces of that, uh, six centimeters square, and then the two pieces in the middle were eight millimeters by 20 millimeters. 
um, and then for the four sides I used 15 millimeter square beams and this is just um, actually this is uh, cypress but yeah I guess it doesn't really matter and then some bolts uh, that were yeah quite heavy and I just made some paper templates for where I wanted to drill holes and put those on there and punched a little mark and drilled the holes and it was very very easy because it's all square nothing complicated it's all very easy to measure and lay out and you can drill all of them at once I, I drilled through four at a time and you just tape them together and drill all those holes like that and I guess yeah the, the pictures explain it you don't really need to um, be told how to do it I think uh, this is the center point of the beams at the side you just find the midpoint of those and put this on there okay so I use this from the X525 frame these are about four or five dollars you can get them um, from Hobby King as separate parts and then just drill holes for those really really simple uh, underneath those I put some cork pieces just to try and insulate them a little bit vibration wise that was also very easy just cut the cork with a craft knife and stick it on it's simple um, so the the beams in the middle were 52 centimeters and the ones around the outside are 38 centimeters and the square plates were six centimeters square um, if anybody feels like doing the same thing that's the sizes uh, and the cross pieces in the middle are a little bit long so I had to clip off the corners like that and when I was at the shop I saw this other piece of cork sheet and I bought it because it was only two dollars I didn't really have any plan to use it but I decided to put that underneath each of the corner plates to insulate those as well uh, I also needed to clip off this little corner um, inside each the corner is at the corner to let those fit together without rubbing and then use another piece of the central um, cross pieces to bring up that height to the same as the the outer pieces anyway so um, I put some cork under there so each of these cross pieces is not actually touching the other one if you know what I mean they're separated by cork at every corner so that's what it uh, looked like before I put any electronics on uh, originally I had planned to put the ESC's on top of the plates at each corner but there wasn't really enough room and it was gonna be awkward to mount them so I decided to just zip tie them to the the beams on each side instead and hang on, can we rotate this maybe ah there we go and another reason that that was helpful was because when I put them there the wires from the motor were now long enough to reach the ESC's directly so I just soldered them straight onto there uh, the flight control is an Arduino Nano this time I could have used a Pro Mini like I've done many times in the past but because this frame is quite big and I wasn't really stuck for space I used a Nano just to have the convenience of the USB connector on there already and the accelerometer gyro is an MPU 6050 breakout board um, pretty simple so that's it <laughs> and I'm using the 100% normal multi-Wii um, software with the 100% normal PID settings and it just works just worked worked fine quite anticlimactic actually when I first took off it was like okay it works <laughs> no problems at all and for the receiver I'm just using the orange RX with PPM um, output uh, so then for my first few tests I just stuck the Mobius directly onto the front plate like that with um, double-sided foam tape 
and I did a little flight in my room and it was really really good no jello whatsoever so I had high hopes but unfortunately when I took it out to the field to the river rather um, sometimes it was good sometimes it was not so like I say I haven't really figured out how to repeat the the good results yet um, anyway so the gimbal was made from some of the off cuts of the plywood and the case for the Mobius whatever you call it the mounting case thing and I just well you can see from the photos I think put everything together uh, these motors have a nice feature in that the center shaft is hollow so you can put the wiring uh, let's see where is it oh yeah you can balance the uh, gimbal structure like that to figure out where the center of mass is so that'll, that'll be where you need to put the roll motor uh, yeah so you can cut out a little piece of wood like that and then drill right through and put the wiring from the uh, accelerometer gyro on the bottom of the gimbal and thread it through the middle of the motor like that it makes things quite nice and tidy and so this is the other one at the roll motor as well so I've done the same thing for both motors except this time now we have the wiring for the accelerometer and also for the pitch motor both coming through this threaded hole and they're just zip tied in there so they don't get in the way and once again cut out a little bit of wood from the back of the roll motor uh, I had to cut off the front of the plate that connects the front corner just to give the gimbal some room to swing and mounted it directly onto that plate this is the first way I tried it and this was no good and after this I tried using some uh, what do you call it rubber damping balls here and this was also no good so I think the problem is 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 basically just in the way I was mounting this gimbal it should really be supported properly from above or somewhere that has a little bit more um, a way to hold it more securely but the way I was attaching it was simply by this piece of wood at the back and the whole thing was sticking out over the front of the quad so it was good in that it had a good range of movement so you could move it directly up and directly down if you wanted to but it wasn't so good in that it wasn't supported very well um, so that was that and I put another piece of cork under there just for fun and cut both corners of that front plate off and so this is what the gimbal looked like when it was done well you just saw it there but uh, you can see how all of the wiring comes out in one nice package at the end and that's all the photos there okay um, so yeah <laughs> I can show you a little bit of the footage that I got here like I say it wasn't very good so let's just have a look at what we got okay this is the first flight I tried outdoors and this is with the Mobius attached directly to that front plate with a piece of double-sided foam tape and as you can see it looks pretty good there's barely any discernible jello at all But unfortunately, as soon as I landed and changed the battery, this is what I got here. So there's some jello somehow creeped in there some, from somewhere. And this is what I got with my specially crafted gimbal. Wow, isn't that great? Um, and this was with it attached uh, directly to the front plate with screws, like it's just screwed straight on there. There's no rubber damping balls or anything this is another flight from a few days later also with the Mobius attached directly to the front plate again 
except this time I'm trying with some 8 inch propellers they're actually 3 bladed propellers um, so I just wanted to try these and see if there was much difference and it's not too bad again although it's not as good as that first flight that I had still and these props turned out to be not very good for this frame because they just they don't give enough lift so I was at full throttle fairly often with this um, with these props and this is what I got when I tried the gimbal again except this time I'm using <coughs> the rubber damping balls and it's still <laughs> not very good is it so um, yeah I'm not not too happy with this gimbal so far but like I say there's plenty of room for improvement and I'll try a few things and see what else I can do by the way this footage here was taken with my smaller cheap ass quadcopter the h-frame one that I built ages ago and to this day this has given me the best footage of anything I've made so it's a little bit disappointing that I spent so much time making a larger quadcopter and putting in all those ideas that I thought were going to give me some good results only to end up with nothing better and in fact actually worse than what I'd had all along from this smaller version